you know what time it is? It's time for Aunt Myrna's Recipes. Well, folks, here we are. After five years of switching things up, trying new things, oh, we finally passed 1,000 subscribers. I know that may seem unsubstantial in comparison to other channels out there, but the fact that there's over a thousand of you out there that deal with my weird ramblings for 15 to 20 minutes every week is... <laughs> Still astounding to me. So I figured, what else to look at for the 1,000 subscribers special other than a video that a lot of you have requested. I hadn't covered it up until this point because it's one of Jack's most popular videos for people to talk about. I think it's been done to death, but you guys want to see my take on it. So today, we're going to be talking about... Aunt Myrna's Party Cheese Salad. I've got my Jack cosplay all set, I've got my best wrinkly red shirt, and I feel like this is a hat Jack would wear, so let's get this show on the road. And let's get this done quick so I can shave the rest of this thing off. I feel like a divorced dad picking up my kids from soccer practice. Before we begin, as always, make sure to like and subscribe. Even though we reached a thousand, there's nothing stopping us from going higher. So let's see how quick it'll take us to reach... 5k next. Also keep a lookout in the community announcements tab and in the description for this video below because I'm going to be setting up memberships for this channel and launching my Patreon. I will talk more about the memberships and the Patreon at the end of the video or you can find information about it in the description or in the community tab like I said. But for now, we got an abomination to look at. This is Aunt Myrna's Party Cheese Salad. <laughs> It's a double header, that's right. Of course I chose a video where he's wearing a yellow shirt instead of one of his red ones. At least I can fix the hat, hold on. God, now I feel like even more of a douchebag than I did before. This week we're doing party cheese salad. When I saw her make this in Alabama, I was like, goosh. I'm not sure about some of these ingredients, but then I tasted it and it's like a dessert. There are very few desserts I can think of that actually have like cheese in the name. There are quite a few desserts out there that have cheese in them. The only thing I can think of right offhand is cheesecake. I don't count this as a dessert, so I'm not including it in that list. So let's get this thing started. We're gonna cook all this on the stove, then we're gonna pour it in this glass dish, which I've never used in my whole life. I think my mom gave me this, but I'm going to have a chance to use this, and then we're going to chill it. I'm not surprised Jack hasn't used a glass baking dish before. I wouldn't be surprised if Jack hasn't used a baking dish before at all, for, you know, its intended purpose at the very least. I don't think there's a lot of dessert baking recipes on his channel in general. Most of it's usually like entrees or side dishes or snack stuff. So it's going to be awesome. Let's get started right now. Wait till you see this. I never would have put these ingredients together had it not been for Aunt Myrna. You still shouldn't put these ingredients together, Jack. I don't care what Aunt Myrna says. You got cream cheese, pimentos, Cool Whip, crushed nuts, any kind that you like. I'm using pecans. Lemon, or you can use lime jello, celery, bell pepper, pineapple, and American cheese. Can you believe this? No, I quite frankly can't believe it. This video has been online for 11 years. Probably hundreds of people have talked about it at this point, but I still can't believe, along with most people out there, that this is a recipe that the human brain concocted. If you told me that this was like a video that released a few weeks or months ago where it's like, I asked ChatGPT to make a dessert with these ingredients in it, that I would believe. But the fact that this is not only a recipe that somebody came up with, but a recipe that has been passed down through the family? That ain't right. This is crazy. Let's go to the stove right now and get this thing started. Take your crushed pineapples and pour it in the pan. How dare you disrespect pineapple like this? The rest of the ingredients, whatever, I don't care. Pineapple deserves better than this. 
Get your Jello mix. You're going to do one large Jello, uh, lemon or lime, or you're going to do two small packets. I grabbed a large one. There you go. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure what you. T did I just. Did I just die for a second or did you guys see that too? It was like three seconds of black screen. I, I've had some editing hiccups in the past in some of my videos. I don't think I've ever just had three seconds of silence and black screen. Tell me you don't watch your videos before you post them without telling me you don't watch your videos before you post them. Cause that, how would that get past post-production screening? I'm not, sure, I'm not even sure what utensil to use for this. So. I'm just gonna mix it up right now. I'm afraid later on, if I use a wooden spoon, it's gonna stick to the wooden spoon. We wouldn't want anything to stick to the wooden spoon. God forbid we lose even a single drop of party cheese salad to getting glued between the spoon's molecules. We can't have that. We need to ingest the whole thing because it's just that decadent. I can't do this. I don't care if Jack's wearing his hat backwards. I can't do that and not be able to move my head back so I can look at you guys. Okay, once the jello is dissolved, you're gonna add, I chopped up the cream cheese. You're gonna add all your cream cheese in there. And you're going to mix that until it totally mixes in, totally melts down. Aunt Myrna and by association Jack was actually pretty ahead of the trend on modern day internet recipes that are just, hey, take your crock pot and just mix in cream cheese with a bunch of other ingredients and it should taste good. I know you've seen them. Here's my creamy chicken Alfredo crock pot recipe where it's just pasta and then here, let's dump in two blocks of cream cheese and some garlic powder and call it a day. Cream cheese pretty much melted down. You can still see the chunks of pineapple in there. Didn't Jack just say he didn't want to switch to a wooden spoon? We're gonna add the chopped uh, celery. Bell peppers, pimento, the nuts. We're gonna mix that in. Celery is probably the most, how do I wanna put it? Uneventful vegetable. It's essentially the same thing as lettuce. It's just solid water. The only different celery has going for it is it has a little bit of a kick to it and it's good with ranch. Then again, so is lettuce. And at least with lettuce, you can make a salad out of it. With celery, it's what, ants on a log? I can't even begin to explain to you how amazing tasting this was. It looks horrible, but I'm telling you, Aunt Myrna never has failed me yet. I may have jumped to the gun when I called King Cobra's mac and cheese literal vomit. Because at the very least, it wasn't liquidy enough to trick somebody into being vomit. But if you just poured this on the sidewalk and told me that somebody just puked there, I would believe you. And I have had this. So I hope mine turns out as good as hers. Have as good as hers. I'll be in business. Okay, I've turned the flame off. I'm just mixing it in now. So go ahead and turn your flame off. There we go. Get it all mixed in. All right, here's a crucial ingredient. Your whipped cream. Yes, because what we need to add to this pile of mess in a pot is more dairy. That's going to make it taste a lot better going down. Not even fully dairy because it's Cool Whip. It's not actual whipped cream. Yeah, there's milk and cream in it, but a lot of it is just oil and saturated fat. Oh, it's gonna have that gross Cool Whip feeling when you bite into it where it coats your mouth with grease and oil. I never stopped to think about the flavor and taste of this before, the sensory ramifications of eating a slice of this. Gonna mix that in gently. Don't wanna spill over. And I don't recommend using, uh, it's the uh, Cool Whip. I don't recommend using imitation or fat-free or sugar-free because they, they have a different reaction. I'm sorry, Jack. Did you just tell us not to use imitation whipped cream after you dumped a tub of Cool Whip into your pot? 
Just you want the regular, real Cool Whip or real whipped cream. If you don't have Cool Whip, just use real whipped cream. Creamiest you can find. If Jack's saying to use a substitute that's creamy and thick, if you don't have Cool Whip or whipped cream lying around, I hate to say it, but I know he would use mayo. I need my glass dish here. Then you're gonna pour it in the, in the dish carefully. This is going to be a very weird nitpick. I hate how you can hear the tonal change in the acoustics of the pot as more and more of the mixture dumps into the baking tray right up until the very end where it gets really high pitched. I'll replay it in post so you guys can hopefully hear what I'm talking about. Something about that just evokes more disgust. It brings forth ideas of the regurgitation of this slop into the pan. Just make sure all your ingredients are all throughout the dish, okay? Take your spoon gently through. You can smell, wow, the lemon and the pineapple are just busting out. And crazy enough, the last step, you're gonna sprinkle on some cheese on top. Use American cheese. I wouldn't use a cheddar or a sharp because it's not going to have the same flavor. That's probably the least amount of cheese I've ever seen Jack use for a recipe. Now I'm going to chill this overnight and then we're going to take a look at it in the morning. It's going to be solid. It's going to be cold. It's going to be sweet. It's going to be delicious. That is barely anything in comparison to some of the stuff that he's making even now. Out of all the recipes that he's done on his channel over the course of the years, don't you think he'd be the most justified in using his signature amount of cheese as he would for a dish called a cheese salad? But he doesn't. Okay. Well Four hours later, he's left it in the fridge to chill. Now, if you, for whatever reason, have not seen this video before, you have the choice to leave. I will not hold that against you. You can leave right now. Otherwise, you can join the rest of us that already know in having this cosmic horror seared into the back of your brain for the rest of eternity. I'll give you five seconds. All right, it's your therapy, Bill. Well, I realized I didn't have to wait overnight and the family wants to try this out. So we've only been chilling this for about four hours, but as you can tell, it's completely solid and cold and it looks beautiful. Look at that. Doesn't that look great? Yeah, Jack, let's just go ahead and throw words around with meanings that they don't actually mean. Because if you think that is beautiful, that looks appealing, you need not new prescription glasses. You need new eyes. You need a new visual processing center in your brain. If any part of you interprets that as being beautiful. It's as if somebody took puke and made concrete out of it. Let's uh let's serve up a little section here and try it out. And you just cut it almost like a dessert and you just scoop it out. Look at can you see it? Can you see that? It's beautiful. I can see it, Jack. I don't want to see it, but I can see it. Can you see that? It's beautiful. Again, you can't just throw words around like that. Place it on a plate. Come on. There we go. It almost has like a pudding effect. Sure. If your pudding was made of cream cheese and vegetables, then yeah, sure. It has a pudding effect. We're going to give that a try. Look at how beautiful that looks. Mmm. Wow. So good. I know it. Of course, I don't know if mine came out as good. So here's to delicious tasting. I know you're all eager to see his reaction to it, but I have a theory. It's not so much a theory as a conspiracy, but just hear me out. This video was posted 11 years ago. Yes, prior to this video, Jack posted some very bad recipes, some of which had raw food, some of which were overcooked. I believe this bite of Aunt Myrna's party cheese salad permanently altered his taste buds in a way to which he was immune to everything he would 
ever cook in the future. I mean, think about it. Like I said, yes, there were mistakes in the past that he made prior to this video, but in the next 11 years, all the raw chicken, all the raw meat, all the screw-ups, all the fat and grease and cheese, everything wrong with what he's cooked that he's ingested, he physically cannot tell that anything is wrong with it because this bite of party cheese salad altered his taste permanently. Here's to delicious tasting. Mmm. We have seen Jack faking or hamming up reactions to food that he's made before. There is genuine pain behind those eyes in those few seconds of chewing. You can see the dimples on his cheeks as he chews pucker in, fighting that urge to spit out this monstrosity that he has just placed in his mouth. It is taking every fiber of his being to sell this to you is appetizing, and he can't even convince himself. Aunt Myrna's party cheese salad could very well be one of the atrocities witnessed by John when he saw Revelations. It blows my mind that it's so sweet and dessert-like and has all those vegetables in it <laughs> and American cheese on top. Now back to what I was talking about earlier, the sensory textural component of party cheese salad. Imagine the soft bite of jello that's thickened by cream cheese and Cool Whip. So you're already kind of fighting to get through your little jello bite, and then you crunch into a vegetable or two. Then you're chewing and chewing and chewing, and as you do, it warms up inside your mouth. All that congealed oil and fat from the cream cheese and the Cool Whip is melting down, just coating the back of your throat and your mouth with oil until you feel like you're at risk of your mouth being invaded by the U.S. government. It is really, oh, it's so good. I can't explain this to you guys. It's sweet and it's crunchy and it's got a custard feel to it on your tongue. Note how Jack does not take another bite all the way through the end of the video. He raises the fork to his mouth a few times, but then subsequently lowers it when he goes to talk to the camera. You very well using it as an excuse not to put more of this in his mouth. I don't blame him. My best assumption is party cheese salad may be some very strange bastardization of ambrosia salad. It's not as common anymore, but it was big in the 70s when Aunt Myrna would have been cooking a lot more. It's a fruit salad mixture with assorted fruits in it, uh, jello powder usually, whipped cream or Cool Whip, and then like miniature marshmallows. Sometimes he, people put like coconut and maraschino cherries and stuff in it. I'm not 100% sure on this, but it, it could be very likely. It's beautiful. All right, I'm going to chow on this, give some to the family. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. <sighs> and fortunately, that is the end of the video. So that is where we're going to end for today. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe. Comment down below any Jack videos that you might want me to look at in the future. Yes, we will be covering more Jack videos going forward. They'll just be less frequent and I'll be covering primarily his older stuff like this. If you didn't see the video pertaining to that, check it out over here. Also leave in the comments any other chefs or home cooks, TV shows, TikTok channels you think are funny or that you want me to take a look at. As I said at the start of the video, I will be working on launching channel memberships along with my Patreon page. There's only two tiers for both of them. They will have the same benefits. They will be the same price starting at $3 and $5. Both the benefit tiers have the perk of having your name included in the thanks on the end card of each video. And the higher tier also will include some member polls for future videos that I'm considering. And mind you, you don't have to sign up at all. It's not something you have to do at all. Don't feel pressured to do it. It's merely something that I set up. So those of you that want to help contribute to the channel, help me grow more, hopefully we can get some better filming equipment in the future. <laughs> With all that said, done and out of the way, as always, thanks y'all for supporting and sticking around. We hit a thousand, let's keep going up. And I hope to see you in the next one.
See ya. Time.